Local leaders, the Designers Center for Disease Control and the World Health Organization have touted the benefits of wearing masks to stop the spread of COVID-19. We're also seeing a lot of disinformation on social media. Nine health expert Dr. Pyle Coley is in this morning to help us separate the fact from the fiction. Dr. Coley, good morning. I see so many posts from people that just don't think masks work. Good morning, Gary. Yes, this is a really important discussion topic because there is a lot of misinformation out there. So let's talk about the efficacy of the masks. I do have to say that not all masks are created equal. So how well a mask works at keeping out the virus really depends on two factors. The first is the material that the mask is made from. And then the second is the fit of, of the mask itself. So you can imagine there's many different materials out there. Usually the thicker, the better, but there's also the porosity of the material or how many holes the tiny material has in it to let viral particles in and out. And then, you know, there's the fit of the mask. So there's a lot of discussion out there whether people should use the regular masks or use the cone-shaped masks. And actually, the cone-shaped masks have actually been shown to have a better fit closer to your face, so they're a little more effective. So when you talk about all the masks out there, the N95s are on this end of the spectrum with the highest efficacy, followed by the KN95s, followed by the simple surgical masks that you see at the dentist's office, followed by the homemade cloth covering. So even though they're the least efficacious of all the masks out there, the ones that we make at home, they're still very effective at filtering out the virus, especially if they're fitted tightly to our face. All right, so what else do you have as far as fact from fiction? So second is that wearing a mask actually causes carbon dioxide poisoning and decreases levels of oxygen enough that you may actually pass out. And this is a fiction. And I really want to drive this one home. And let's talk about why. So the body does two things when it breathes. The first is it takes in oxygen. And then the second is that it gives off the carbon dioxide that we don't want. Now, masks can affect the ability of the body to take in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. But again, it depends on those two factors I talked about, the material and the fit. So on one end of the spectrum is a plastic bag. Let's say I put a plastic bag over somebody's head. It wouldn't let anything in, it wouldn't let anything out, and it would be extremely dangerous. But on the other end of the spectrum, what's very safe is wearing homemade cloth coverings, which are very good at letting things in and letting things out. So yes, they do affect the ability of the amount of oxygen that's getting in very slightly, and they do make you rebreathe your carbon dioxide also very slightly. But for most healthy adults, it's really not a problem because the body adjusts very quickly. Now, if you have underlying lung disease or you're somebody who's dependent on oxygen, you really want to talk to your doctor about what's the best type of face covering to have. But for most average adults, it is not going to cause carbon dioxide poisoning. It's not going to deprive your body of oxygen, and it's very safe to wear a mask. All right, that is all good to know. The last thing we see a lot of out there is that they can't wear a mask because it infringes on my rights. I shouldn't uh, have to wear a mask. Yeah, this is a good one, Gary. And I think masks have become so politicized and they've become an expression of our political freedoms. But I actually want to remind everybody with the 4th of July, just a couple of days away, that this is fiction because masks actually enable your freedom in my book. Just think about it. Masks are allowing us to do the things that we want to do. They're allowing us to leave our homes, allowing us to go to the grocery store, allowing us to get together and do it in a safe fashion that's not reckless or irresponsible. Because doing it without a mask, frankly, is reckless and irresponsible given what we know about the spread of the virus. So I think people really need to change their relationship with the mask and think about it as a way to express our freedoms and as a way to celebrate all the freedoms that we get to enjoy here in America. We get to leave our homes, we get to do the things we want to do, and masks are enabling us to do that. I think that's a great way to look at it. All right, Dr. Coley, as always, thank you very much. Have a good one.